where does that leave countries like India? India has its own uh, reservations and concerns with aggressive Chinese behavior. I'm sure you followed the developments at our northern border over the last couple of years. Uh, and now, with this whole Russia-Ukraine situation, there seems to be the feeling that India and the United States, who are also strategic partners, may not necessarily be on the same page. After all, India's abstained from all the votes at the United Nations. Even Joe Biden called India somewhat shaky, his words. Uh, do you see some kind of a rupture there? And, and do you, do you, what is the elbow room for countries like India, which are stacked up against China? I don't think uh, that American unhappiness with India, and, and there's no question the Biden administration is unhappy with India, as uh, President Biden made clear to Mr. Modi uh, yesterday. So we're unhappy, or the administration is unhappy. But it doesn't matter very much. Uh, the United States needs India. Uh, the United States has a rich history of having fundamental disagreements with India, and we've gotten used to that. Uh, but more importantly, we need India for purposes of containing China. So I, I don't think there's any serious danger of a rupture in relations uh, between the two countries. I think from India's point of view, it is not a good thing that the Americans are bogged down in Eastern Europe and have lost sight of the importance of the China threat. Because India, the United States, and Russia, as I said before, should all be on the same page vis-a-vis -vis China. Uh, we're in this rather bizarre situation where it makes no strategic sense for the United States to be trying to drive a wedge between India and Russia. If anything, we should be happy that they're working together, but we can't be because we are in this remarkably foolish war uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and you wanna remember, we're not doing any of the actual fighting now, but we are deeply involved. Uh, we're doing everything but the fighting and uh, all of our sort of intellectual um, capital is being focused on Eastern Europe now. We're not thinking about how to deal with China. And again, this is, uh, from our point of view, a terrible situation, but you never want to lose sight of the fact that it's Ukraine that is paying the greatest price here. This country is being destroyed. And I argued long ago that this is what would happen. Right? I'm not saying that this is justified. I'm just saying that this is what happens when you poke a great power like Russia in the eye and you present it with an existential threat. You do not want to underestimate how ruthless great powers can be. And this includes the United States of America as well as Russia when they think they're facing an existential threat. And again, Vladimir Putin thinks he's facing an existential threat. And in my opinion, that makes him very dangerous. All right, Professor John Mearsheimer, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for your time. It was my pleasure.